the encounter between Jesus and the demons in Matthew 8, 28 minus 34, marked another significant victory for Jesus over the forces of temptation and evil. This event took place after Jesus had successfully resisted Satan's temptations in the wilderness, as described in Matthew 4. In this subsequent confrontation, Jesus continued to assert his authority over Satan's dominion, both in the spiritual realm by casting out demons and in the domain of illness by healing a paralytic. After Jesus and his disciples crossed the Sea of Galilee, they arrived in the region of the Gerasenes, an area inhabited by Gentiles. There, they encountered two men possessed by demons who were emerging from tombs. These men were so violently influenced by the demonic forces within them that no one dared to pass by that way. They recognized Jesus as the Son of God and questioned whether he had come to torment them before the appointed time of judgment. In the distance, a large herd of pigs was grazing and the demons pleaded with Jesus to allow them to enter the pigs if he was going to cast them out. Jesus granted their request and the entire herd rushed down a steep bank into the lake, drowning in the water. The swineherds who witnessed this extraordinary event rushed back to the town and reported what had happened, including the deliverance of the demon-possessed men and the demise of the pigs. The news spread quickly, and the people of the town came out to see Jesus for themselves. However, instead of rejoicing in the miraculous power of Jesus, they were overcome with fear and pleaded with him to leave their region. This incident highlights Jesus' authority over the spiritual realm and his ability to free individuals from the grip of demonic possession. It also reveals the resistance and rejection that Jesus often faced from those who witnessed his works of power. The people's fear and request for Jesus to leave were likely due to a combination of factors. Firstly, the loss of the pigs represented a significant economic blow to the region, as they were considered unclean animals according to Jewish law and were therefore being raised primarily for Gentile consumption. Secondly, the presence of Jesus and his power exposed the deep spiritual darkness that had enveloped the area, causing discomfort and fear among the inhabitants. In other accounts of this incident, such as in Mark 5 and Luke 8, Additional details are provided. In these versions, the possessed man referred to himself as Legion, indicating that he was inhabited by a multitude of demons. He had been living among the tombs, exhibiting superhuman strength as he broke free from chains and inflicted harm upon himself. When Jesus approached, the man fell on his knees and recognized him as the Son of the Most High God. Jesus commanded the impure spirits to leave the man, and they begged to enter a nearby herd of pigs. The subsequent drowning of the pigs and the transformation of the formerly possessed man into a calm and sane individual astounded the witnesses. Rather than allowing the man to accompany him, Jesus instructed him to return to his own people and share the great things the Lord had done for him. The man obediently went and proclaimed throughout the Decapolis, a league of ten cities in the region, the miraculous deliverance he had experienced at the hands of Jesus. As a result, large crowds from various regions, including Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and the area across the Jordan, began to follow Jesus. The confrontation with the demons and the subsequent events in the region of the Gerasenes serve as a powerful demonstration of Jesus' authority over evil spirits and his ability to bring liberation and healing to those in bondage. The fear and rejection exhibited by the people of the town reflect the resistance that Jesus often encountered as he challenged the status quo and disrupted the forces of darkness. It also highlights the urgency of the kingdom of God and the divine judgment that awaits Satan and his followers. The incident serves as a reminder of the power and victory available to those who align themselves with Jesus and his mission of redemption and restoration. In the book of Matthew, specifically in Matthew 4 and Matthew 12, 28 to 34, we encounter a fascinating account where demons actually beg Jesus to accept their proposal. Surprisingly, Jesus grants their request, 
but only after receiving permission from them. Upon accepting their proposal, the demons leave the tormented men and enter into a nearby herd of pigs. What happens next is quite ironic. The possessed pigs, now housing the demons, become agitated and rush off a cliff into the Sea of Galilee. The demon's intention in making this request was to avoid eternal punishment. However, their plan backfired, resulting in the destruction of their earthly hosts, the pigs. Jesus had no reason to reject their proposal because it served his purposes on multiple levels. First, it led to the liberation of the tormented men from the influence of the demons. Second, since pigs were considered unclean animals according to Jewish tradition, they were an appropriate emblem and a safe repository for the demons. And third, accepting the demons' proposal did not alter their ultimate fate on the Day of Judgment. Therefore, Jesus saw it as an opportunity to allow the demons to essentially carry out his work on earth. It is important to note that Jesus' encounter with Satan in the wilderness was entirely different. If Jesus were to yield to Satan's demands, it would have led him into disobedience. Therefore, Jesus rebuked Satan using scriptures and firmly refused to give in to his temptations. This distinction is crucial. The petition of the demons in Matthew 8 did not lead Jesus into sin, whereas Satan's demands were designed to lead him astray. The demons specifically requested to be sent into a nearby herd of pigs, which was not an unpleasant idea for the Jews who regarded pigs and demons as belonging to the same category. In Matthew 7, Jesus warned his disciples not to cast pearls before swine. Additionally, according to Peter, false teachers are individuals who revert to their pagan nature, 2 Peter 2.22. However, the region on the eastern shore of the Sea of Galilee where this event took place was predominantly inhabited by Gentiles. Therefore, the pigs in question were not wild, but rather being raised for the market. Their owners would have been devastated by the loss of such a significant herd, estimated to be around 2,000 according to Mark 5. The demon's request to enter the pigs had an additional deadly purpose. Demons are known to inflict harm and agony on God's creation and do everything in their power to fuel hostility against Jesus and his. Invasion of Satan's Stronghold, as described in Matthew 17, 14-20. The destruction of the pigs led the Gentiles in the region to react by asking Jesus to leave, as recorded in Matthew 8. This response is a sad commentary on the perversion of their values. One would expect them to rejoice in the victory over Satan's demons, but instead, they preferred swine over people and hogs over the Savior. Throughout the centuries, commentators have asserted that the world rejects Jesus because it prefers the pigs. Jesus, however, did not destroy the demons, but allowed evil to run its course in this world until the day when everything will be set right. The outcome of the exorcism itself is not explicitly mentioned in Matthew's account. However, Mark and Luke note that the formerly demon-possessed man from Gerasenes pleaded with Jesus to join him. Jesus, however, instructed him to go back home and tell his family and friends how much God had done for him. Luke 8, 38, minus 39, Mark 5, 18, minus 19. While the disciples were to be fishers of men among their own people, this Gentile who had been transformed by Jesus would be a fisher of men. Despite this, the loss of the herd of pigs served as a means to expose the true values of the people in the area. They preferred their swine-based economy over embracing the power and grace of Jesus. As described in Matthew 8, this verse reveals the sinful character of humanity. Jesus' action of casting out the demons from the two men and allowing them to enter the pigs, which ultimately led to the pigs' demise, stirred up a strong negative reaction from the community. Their main concern was not the liberation of individuals from demonic possession or the spiritual implications of Jesus' power, but rather the potential economic downfall and loss of business. Their attachment to material wealth and worldly interests overshadowed their spiritual well-being. When they saw Jesus approaching their city, they asked him to leave. Unfortunately, this reflects a mistake that we often make as well. We become accustomed to living with sin 
and are reluctant to consider the possibility of God removing it, especially if it means sacrificing perceived pleasures or income. However, holding on to sin is one of the most toxic things we can do. This story serves as a poignant reminder of the consequences of prioritizing worldly interests above spiritual health. In conclusion, the account of Jesus granting the demon's request to enter the herd of pigs and the subsequent destruction of the pigs serves multiple purposes. It allows for the liberation of the possessed men, demonstrates the power and authority of Jesus over the demonic realm, and reveals the misplaced priorities and attachment to worldly interests of the people in the region. It also highlights the contrast between the demon's plea and Satan's temptations, as well as the distinction between Jesus' response to each. Ultimately, this event serves as a reminder of the importance of prioritizing spiritual well-being over worldly possessions and the consequences of clinging to sin.